Hi, good morning. This is Rick Gleason and Don King coming to you from the University of Washington from the Region 10 OSHA Training Center covering Washington, Alaska, Oregon, and Idaho. We sure appreciate you being with us today on this podcast. We have a very special guest here today. We're going to be talking about a very specialized team uh, within the Seattle Fire Department. And Don, can you tell us about our guest? Yes, I'm very excited. Uh, we have uh, one of uh, Seattle's firefighting best, uh, Captain Christopher Lombard, uh, who is the gentleman that's in charge of tunnel rescue. So uh, that's the post they've got him in. And uh, Christopher and I met some uh, three, three plus years ago, and we uh, have since been working back and forth in all the tunnels. And Chris and all of his team uh, and all of the firefighters, as many as we can get a hold of, come down into the tunnels and look at the various areas they're going to be in. So with that, I'm going to turn this over to Christopher and say good morning, Christopher. Tell us a little bit about how, when you grew up, you wanted to be a fireman. <laughs> well, thank you very much for having me on. It, uh, it was kind of an interesting story, I guess. If you go, as we do in the fire department, go into most grade schools, uh, this is pretty common across the nation, too, and ask most kids, I guess, what they want to be when they grow up. It's interesting that most want to be police or firefighters. Uh, it's only after when they started getting to grade school and middle school that uh, a lot of people start realizing that there's other jobs and go different directions. I didn't really give it too much more thought until I got into college. I attended Oregon State University down in Corvallis, Oregon, and it looked like a fun thing to do. They had a volunteer program with their paid department, and I helped work with them and stuff, and it was a very exciting job. So as I progressed through college, it was uh, it, it's a Again, have more and more appeal, different things every day, kind of puzzles to solve as far as how to help people, how to get people out of interesting or awkward situations. Uh, just the whole idea of having a career of helping people was, was really appealing. So Corvallis was a great department, but I was looking for something a little bigger. Uh, and so started applying up and down the West Coast and ended up with my first choice, which was the Seattle Fire Department. I uh, haven't had any regrets since and have uh, enjoyed over 20 plus years of coming to work every single day uh, and, and help and serve the people of the region. Great. So Christopher, tell us uh, how did this, how long has this tunnel rescue uh, group been uh, formed and how did that get put together? Well, Seattle was uh, through all kinds of reasons, was one of the last major cities in the United States uh, to really start developing any kind of subway system. We started a number of years ago uh, with the planning and uh, design of, of putting in a link rail system. Uh, the first portions of that included some tunneling, what we call our Beacon Hill and a Beacon Hill station on that. As the, tra the transportation woes increased and population in the area grew, it came to a real quick realization of the citizens of this area around Seattle, the greater Seattle area, that some of the solutions, among the solutions that we were going to have to implement to try to keep up with some of the traffic and, and moving people around, we're going to include you know, subway components, link rail components, in addition to our pre-existing bus and heavy rail type, uh, type systems. The region formed uh, a regional transit authority known as Sound Transit in this area, uh, who was designed, uh, who was you know put in place uh, with a lot of elected officials and, and various others to start working on addressing the region's transportation woes. Uh, again, one of the one of the parts of that big solution was a link rail system initially connecting the airport, SeaTac International Airport, and the downtown core, but with thoughts of expanding that system throughout the region, as has happened in a lot of other major cities. The fire department got involved uh, even before there was tunneling, just with the idea of with the heavy rail or light rail connections, what was going to happen, how we were going to rescue people when the unfor well, not unforeseeable, but foreseeable, unfortunate accident started to happen. So we actually established our partnership with Sound Transit even before tunneling became into the picture. When the tunneling uh, did start 
to, to come, we recognized and Sound Transit recognized that the, with the caliber of the services that Seattle Fire Department already provided to the area and with some of the state and federal requirements for rescue services for some of the big capital projects such as the tunneling and underground station, that building on our existing partnership was going to be an easier and better opportunity for the future than maybe trying to go outside, come up with contracted support services or any of the other viable and, and good options that were there, but it, uh, we wanted to continue to build on our current partnership. So again, many years ago, uh, Sound Transit started to develop the plans for the tunnel to go under uh, the, the Beacon Hill area for that station. We we partnered, we, Seattle Fire Department went out, looked and looked at what the requirements were, looked at what training options were, uh, tried to find out what it took to provide high caliber rescue services. Working with Sound Transit at the time and the contractor, we took components of existing technical rescue teams in the department. So our heavy rescue team, our confined space rescue teams, our high angle rescue team, uh, that already, that we knew had a lot of the disciplines and expertise that would eventually be needed, uh, and looked to see what it would take to bring them up to meet all the requirements for tunnel rescue stuff. We sent a lot of those team members uh, to Colorado School of Mines to do actually uh, hard rock mining type stuff. We sent people to West Virginia with the coal mines, some of the tunnel training sites that they have there. Uh, we looked around locally, uh, sent people all over the nation, kind of trying to find the best of the best, and then brought it back uh, to bring the whole team up to all of the various requirements and regulations to meet that rate, to meet all the different, to check the boxes, so to speak, on what it took. Then as the tunnel was actually constructed, uh, the partnership just continued to grow as far as site visits, training, training with contractors, training and work with sound transit members. So this it was all well established. Well, not too long ago, uh, with the successes of the first portion of our link rail system, sound transit through the Sound Transit 2 initiative in the region, decided to build and expand the link rail going north of the city. And that involved significant tunneling going from our downtown core, a uh, pre-existing bus and flight rail tunnel. So extending that tunnel all the way up to the University of Washington, uh, probably about, uh, there was a, I believe like a 14,000 foot segment and probably another 5,000 foot segment roughly speaking, uh, all tunneled uh, underground. And so again, based on the previous experiences, uh, Sound Transit was very quick this time to work in contract with Seattle Fire Department to continue to provide those services. Uh, it's, we found as a department that it's really helped in that to you know, have components or keep people that have seen the tunnel construction from you know dirt coming out of the ground all the way up to finished products, uh, and people, you know, having just simple age responses on underground stations and platforms, knowing the history, knowing the, the systems and whatnot. Uh, again, building on the continued partnership with the Regional Transit Authority, Sound Transit, uh, we were again engaged once they decided to continue extending the link rail system from the University of Washington uh, up to the north end of our city, uh, the current Northley project. As, as we call it. So again, this has been a long and developing partnership uh, that Seattle Fire Department has had, continuing to just learn more and get better at our skills uh, with the rescue work and the training. Boy, that is great. So, uh, Captain Lombard, uh, on the there's a code of Labor and Industries, WISHA, DOSH, Washington State, OSHA, you know, mandates, uh, I, I think, is what a five person rescue team within 30 minutes, and then another five person rescue team within a couple hours. Uh, do you also provide that same service for the downtown Highway 99 uh, Bertha tunnel project, or, or do they do that on their own? Well, I'm glad that you, you mentioned that. That's actually one of the interesting things that we learned at the WAC. Uh, part of the partnership that we had with Sound Transit was 
you know, what does it take to meet those things? And I think one of the advantages that we brought was that we're able to provide the initial team and the secondary response team, and we do it all at once, all up front. The daily staffing of Seattle Fire Department, we have in excess of, you know, 33 stations. We have a couple other facilities. You know, daily staffing is in excess of, you know, 200, 210 members on duty throughout the department at any time. And so when there is an incident, the, you're right that the that the OSHA requires, or because Washington is a non-OSHA state, our labor and industries requires that they, you have a five-person response team, uh, you know, within that first half hour. Because of our daily staffing, we're able to bring, you know, dozens and dozens of people at any given time. And our, our technical, or our tunnel rescue team is... Uh, you know, at least 10 members, so we'll be able to bring the primary and the secondary right away. Unfortunately, um, what, uh, what gets, what gets complicated with the tunnel stuff is because all of our stations and stuff are providing day-to-day -day emergency response throughout the whole city, EMS, fire, and whatnot, uh, we found that there was an added cost as far as maintaining the tunnel rescue team as far as the training and all the after hours stuff. How do we, you know, how do we backfill, get people into the tunnels and whatnot. Um, and, and that cost has uh, proven, or just some folks, some different ent entities doing tunneling in the region have chosen to do contracted support services uh, for their own rescue stuff above and beyond or outside of the scope of Seattle Fire Department. Uh, and with the State Route 99 tunnel, they opted to go with their own contractor-provided rescue support team. So we still support them for EMS, fire incidents, and, and whatnot. Uh, you know, on the surface, we don't we don't go into the shafts or into the tunnel there. And certainly, we have continued to work uh, with Washington State Department of Transportation on how the final tunnel will work. You know, after the construction portion is done, we will, of course, have to respond to car crashes and aid calls and whatnot in and around those tunnels when they're done. There, there has been, you know, a, a pretty good relationship with WashDOT on a lot of that finalized work, we, but we don't provide the day-to-day -day rescue services for them. Got it. Very good. So, um... On the normal, uh, I know when we finally got the trains actually on the track, you folks actually did a uh, breakout of someone if they were in the train and were injured and went down and actually rescued somebody and brought them back out with smoke in the tunnel and the whole thing. Is that right? So we've actually done several rescue scenarios. Uh, the, the FTA, uh, I believe it's the FTA, uh, it requires before the opening the uh, what they call revenue service yeah. of any of the link rail systems uh, that they do you know drills of this nature with the surrounding public safety entity. Uh, so we uh, the the tunnel team while there's construction going on in the tunnel, the tunnel team will do drills as you described. Uh, you know maybe low visibility drills, uh, worker impingement drills, or even just medical stuff. Uh, on the construction sites. We do that regularly, at least once a month, sometimes more often, mm -hmm. where we'll work with the contractors, uh, you know, during downtimes or after hours or whatnot, to uh, come up with scenarios that are plausible for under construction, and the tunnel rescue team will go with them. For the pre-opening and the more real world or regular operation stuff, we have, uh, like I said, we've had the pre-opening exercises, uh, with sound transit, where we do come up with, you know, plausible, but albeit big scenarios, and then work out with sound transit, emergency management, fire department, police department, and all the players, how are we going to go about this? And then we actually do it, we'll exercise. The yeah. drill. Uh, because the stuff is so new to the Seattle area, we're still learning a lot from a lot of our partners around the rest of the nation and the world. London with their underground, uh, Washington, D.C. with their metro system, uh, you know, Boston, L.A., I could just go on and on with some of the other partners. We've reached out to a lot of them as far as how do we maintain the ongoing stuff, you know, how do we work, how do you work, how do we work with our regional transit on continuing those skill sets, you know, do we find, you 
know, a week a year, a day a year, or something where we can continue to do the big uh, disaster drills or terrorism drills or whatnot. Yeah. Do you know, Chris, uh, how many uh, systems of support, tunnel system supports of a fire department are in the country right now in the United States? I believe it's, I, I'm pretty sure that we are not the only one, uh, oh. but because of the amount of tunneling that we are doing in Seattle. Again, I kind of mentioned at the beginning that we're a little behind the curve as far as building out mass rail transit. You know, most of the other big cities in the country already have it from uh -huh. you know, tens, if not hundreds of years, <laughs> you know, decades ago. Sure. Uh, you know, as they don't have a need for a current tunnel rescue team. Uh, I, I don't know who the others are, but I've heard and read in trade magazines that there are some others out there, but, uh, I'm, I don't know who they are, okay. uh, so I know of the major city fire departments uh, were one of the few that are out there. I believe Washington, D.C., with some of the expansion that they're doing to the Washington Metropolitan Transit Tunnel System, the D.C. Metro, I believe if, if Washington, D.C. Fire and EMS Department doesn't have it already, I think they were looking at putting one together, uh, but I don't know who those others would be. Well, it's certainly fine. a small niche. Certainly that's, a small niche. Throughout well, the that's day. what I'm hearing because everybody, all the tunnel people I talked to said we never had the luxury of a fire department like we've got here. They said we had to have our own team put up together. We did our own rescue. We, we had no idea that there was such a great thing around. So they really think it's wonderful to have you guys on board. Well, and that was very interesting to us. It was kind of a, oh my goodness moment when you realize that so much of tunneling you know, up until recent history, has been in much more rural areas, you know, yeah. the, uh, you know, tunneling under Lake Powell for new water, you know, so, uh, intakes and, you know, tunneling in, through mountains for transportation or rail, you know, across the United States. So much of it is so far removed yeah. from, you know, big, big fire departments or departments that are, you know, full-time or staffed or have this capability. Uh, so, you know, by nature, they, a lot of the contractors had to kind of do their own thing, had to have their own tunnel rescue team because right, there was right. no other option. So yep. that was uh, interesting and insightful for us to learn. Yeah. Uh, well, Captain Lombard, if folks had questions, is there a website or is there a contact or could they contact you or what would be the best way if, if anyone had questions about this? Sure. Well, there's, there's two areas to go. First, I'm going to re refer you guys, uh, you know, I've got to give kudos and mention our partner in all of this, that's Sound Transit. They're at www.soundtransit.org. And in the top right of that home webpage, there's a green button with a little shovel that talks about projects and plans. Uh, and then for the Seattle Fire Department ourselves, Seattle Fire Department's website is www.seattle.gov, as in government and then forward slash fire. Uh, or they can call our main phone number. It's area code 206-386-1400 and just ask for the tunnel rescue officer. Oh, this All is right. great. Thank you so much. It's been great to have you on board here today. This has been Rick Gleason and Don King from uh, the University of Washington. Don, you got any uh, last thoughts or comments for us? Well, I think there's a, a great saying that kind of fits where, where the fire department and, and the rescue people come in, and it's called, um, True miracles are created by men when they use the courage and intelligence that God gave them. Uh, and that was by Gene Anoville. I like that. Yeah. So, and to all of you out there, have a great and a safe day and aloha. I was young and feisty, never did things for the book. Just let me get my toolbox and I'll take myself a book. I climbed up on the dozer with my mechanic's pride. Said, you can keep it running, friend, while I poke around inside. Shake hands with danger, meet a guy you ought to know. I used to laugh at safety. Now they call me Three Finger Joe. Though I learned a lesson, I forgot it soon enough. The nicks and burns and scratches showed the young ones I was tough. Till another morning, 
I was grinding on some steel. My other hand got careless and fed my skin into the wheel. Shake hands with danger, step right up and say hello. Grinding wheels and metal, I went made me three finger Joe. Take a fall just to save themselves a minute. I've seen them lose it all. I've watched them court in trouble, seen them take a chance and lose. They get careless for a moment, spend a lifetime with the blues. Shake hands with danger. Shake hands with danger. Shake hands with danger. Compared to them, I'm lucky to be just Three Finger Joe.